press the button and it should kick in. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, then I'm doing something wrong. Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today is gonna be a little bit different. If you flooded an Aprilia RSV Melee or a Tuono or a Falco, you might wanna stick around and stay tuned to this channel because you're gonna find out how to get it started again. Let's uh, strip the bike and uh, let's get going. First things first, we're gonna have to remove the seat. There's two bolts holding it. You have to push the seat back like that and then you can get to the bolts right there. Just unscrew it, it's an 8mm hexagon, same on the other side. If you don't take the seat off first, you, you will not be able to lift the tank up. That's, that's the problem because it's, it's touching the tank. So you take... Now that's probably traveled to another dimension, as it usually does with bolts. We're gonna prop the tank up, to do that you're gonna have to remove that bolt and that bolt which holds the tank and then you can then you can lift up the tank to about here and then we're gonna get uh, better access to the rear plugs which is just, just right there and we're gonna have to take off the air box to be able to reach the front plugs which run there far far away right I think lift the tank up uh, you're gonna undo them them two bolts I just showed you there and right there and you're gonna need a formula allen key and you will need the tank prop which mm, you might have might not you, if you don't have it you can use probably just a piece of wood or something one out this little bracket you can move it out okay and then all you gotta do is just lift the tank up, make sure you don't scratch anything with them brackets at the end. I'm gonna turn the wheel a little bit to be able to get it out. That's it. And just put it there. There you have it. Now you can you can access the air box. So all you gotta do is just undo these bolts around the around the airbox all around then you can pop the lid off and then I'll show you what what's the next step once you loosen all of them up you don't have to take them all out completely uh, because they're still in but they're not in the thread anymore and then you just lift this up and it should come out fairly easy uh, sometimes the air filter stays in sometimes sticks in the head sticks in the lid uh, sticks in there if you have a little oil spatter here don't worry about it, it's completely normal on these Aprilias. We are gonna have to take this off from here so it's out the way because when we lift the airbox off we don't wanna rip these very very delicate uh, rubber pipe work which, <coughs> which is important because this is the manifold uh, pressure sensor and that helps the, the bike decide the fuel, fuel ink and everything. It's, it's important not to rip those I'm also going to disconnect the injector because we are going to crank it over on full throttle and we don't want any petrol to go in. It's got enough in it already because it's been obviously flooded. So we're going to disconnect both injectors and then we're going to do the, the full throttle uh, cylinder flush. Uh, right, it's got six, six bolts in there holding the airbox on. We're gonna take them out. You got six of them, three on this side, three on the other side, and you're gonna have to remove all of them and then you can lift this up. Before we can remove the air box, we're gonna have to disconnect the crankcase breather pipe, which is just a, a spring clip and the rubber pipe coming from the from the cylinder. Just gonna have to break the seal. If it's if it's there a long time, it might not come off easy, but it should. This one should come off. 
fairly easy and luckily it's being oiled because the oil f to the airbox is coming through this pipe when you like rev the tits out of the bike it just splatters some oil back up there so it should slide off fairly easy which it just did and now we are should be able to remove the airbox uh, you gotta be care. Uh, you don't have to worry about the bolts inside. They don't gotta drop out because they, they are locked inside uh, uh, a plastic uh, hoarding kind of thing. I'm gonna show you in a minute once I removed it. Uh, but yeah, that's it really for the airbox. You gotta make sure it don't break the rubber end in there, and then just lift it out. That's it. And it just comes out. So this is what you don't need to worry about. Then plastic rings over there. They hold the bolts so they can't fall into the engine. So don't you don't need to worry about it. And also there is a pipe on the other end. <coughs> this one. Right there. That pipe. That fills up with oil every now and then. So you might have to drain it. It depends. Oh, I can't focus it. Sorry guys. <coughs> so yeah. That's it, that's the airbox off. So now we can access the spark plugs on the front cylinder. Right, so the front spark plugs are just right there, look. Them two. We're gonna have to take them out. And also we are going to disconnect the injector from the, fro fro the front cylinder. Just gonna push that tab in and pull it backwards. That's it. Rear cylinder plugs, which is hell of a lot easier. I mean, come on, that's just, just right there. It's dead easy. To get the caps on, the spark plug caps, it could be, could be a bit of a pain. So just take your time with it. That wasn't too bad. Can't really mix it up because the inside one is a longer one and the outside one is a shorter one, so can't really mix it. Okay. If you have the original spark plug key, that's probably the best. If you don't, then probably you can grind off uh, the outside of it to be able to get it in there because the tolerance on the inside uh, internal spark plug, internal, the ones inside there, is uh, from the cylinder head wall. Is not too much, so we're gonna pop them out. Shouldn't be too tight because I've put it in last time, and then I just use a 13 mil socket on the end with the universal joint. Should be just hand tight. Mm, not very good. Smell of petrol. Yeah. Not very good. Black. Right, this one, you can't really put uh, this on. So, this is where a 13 mil ratchet spanner is gonna come in handy. The access is unbelievable on that one. Yeah, it's the right way. But with this one, just put it on. And that's it. That easy. If you have the right tool. <laughs> and again, it should be just hand tight. Like I explained in my couple of other videos when I'm doing a compression test on my Virago. Uh, all spark plugs always must be able to get it out by hand and you shouldn't use any any big force and yeah this is rich as rich as hell I already I already adjusted the ECU a little bit took some petrol away uh, hopefully we'll be alright next time the rear cylinder one is a lot easier you just pop these puppies out one next one and then again, just the sparkle key on it. And after that, it should come out by hand. Yep, rich. Mm. 
Yeah. There we go. It's black. No good. Both injectors are disconnected. Just double checking. Yep. We are gonna crank it on full throttle so it's gonna suck in loads of air and it's gonna push out anything which is in the cylinder because there is no spark plugs uh, fitted. So there will be no compression, it's just psh, gonna push everything out which was left there because we're gonna really we're gonna flush out the cylinders before we attempt to start it again um, because we don't wanna fold the new plugs. I disconnected the front headlight because just to help the battery so obviously the bike won't start hopefully hopefully it won't start now no it can't right let's purge this out okay that should be enough and now we're going to fit the new plugs uh, both connect the injectors back on and just gonna put it in by hand first gently turn it the other one you have to put it in the spark plug key line it up nice and gently so when you tighten up a, sp uh, a spark plug it will give you a weird feeling and then it's strip stripping the thread but don't worry it's not once it's go fairly like lightly tight then just give it another I don't know, 45 degrees or maybe a 90 degrees and that's it don't over tighten it it doesn't need to be super tight it's not gonna come loose it's gonna crush washer on it fairly tight and another 90 degrees that's it done you should have a nice positive click when you put it on Give them a push, make sure it's down all the way. Okay, we can move on to the other one. Same here, except the only difference is that you you are going to have to use the spark plug key on both because it's just not really enough space. Wiggle it a little bit when it's towards the bottom. I'm gonna put this on. degrees that's it I always check the rubber inside your spark plug key because you don't want to leave it on the spark plug inside there outside on. I think you, you will be able to do this uh, if you're following the instructions in this video okay so I'm gonna give it a 45 ish and another 45 that's it done and just put the plug cap back on line it up nice and easy and it should click in that's it it's a fairly firm click but nothing crazy Ah, perfect. The plug's back on. Right. While you're here, you can reconnect the injectors. It's done. I'm going to do the other side. Onto that green. Line it up nicely and you should have a nice a nice click like that when you're done right we got the new plugs in next step is put the airbox back on right so going up in here and then just drop it back down yeah that's better I got to realign these air induct rubber thing is they usually end up in the right place anyway put this back 
back on before we forget. That's it. Put this back on before we forget. Injectors back on. So we're going to tighten up all the six bolts. And then we are basically ready to give it a go. done everything right yeah what we're gonna do next is prime the fuel pump a few times just watch it one more and one more and I do one more just in case and we're gonna do another one before we start it so what happens is uh, if you leave it like uh, a few few weeks few months uh, it's losing the pressure in the injectors and when you try to start it and and you crank it over it just uh, doesn't have the pressure to, to vaporize the fuel properly so what it does is just basically like weeing in it's just like like that into the cylinder and as, as soon as it did that that's it it's it's gonna be it's gonna be no good and it won't start after this so uh, I genuinely didn't start the bike yet so this is straight out of the shed what you just saw what I did it should it should start so I will be surprised if it doesn't so the other thing is to do when you when you prime it again just make sure you pull pull this uh, fast idle all the way on and you press the button and it should kick in if it doesn't if it doesn't then I'm doing something wrong want to do uh, or change the oil that's the next next step but obviously that's gonna be that's gonna be another video uh, because this would be just way too long so this is my basic well not basic but if you flooded your bike just follow these instru instructions and you should be good idle is nice <laughs> 